SP Math Teach here again, reminding you to like and subscribe if you appreciate and use these videos. Today we're going to talk about a two-way frequency table. These things are these things are easy. You're going to have a fine time with these. The idea behind a two-way frequency table is this. Imagine you decided for whatever reason to survey a group of students in your cafeteria, in your classroom, on your sports team. And you ask them two questions. Do you like burritos or don't you? You could list the data this way, right? As students kind of respond, you could put tally marks and you could go ahead and continue to calculate how many people like or don't like burritos. What if you, for whatever reason, also decided, well, if it's a sports team, this will be easy. But if you also asked a second question, it may or may not be related to the first question, but do you like sports? Yes or no? Once again, you could collect data and you could tally them up in kind of a, a like a tally chart, right? These would be considered one-way tables. Either they're vertical like this one, because they go up and down, or they're horizontal. Well, a two-way frequency table is literally just taking those two things and marrying them together. You still put your data in, but you just pay a little bit more attention to who answers what way. So if you were asking a student, <clears throat> do you like burritos, and they say yes, then you know that you're, you haven't put your tally mark yet, but you know that yes to burritos means you're going to be putting a mark in one of these two spots. And then you follow it up with, oh, okay, you like burritos, cool. Do you like sports? And the person says, oh, no. Then, boom, that's where your tally mark goes. That's all there is to a two-way frequency table. Frequency is just tally marks, right? How often does the answer occur? How frequently does it occur? So here's an example of a two-way frequency table that's already been filled in. Um, it is not uncommon to have table rows and columns filled in. In this particular one, let's switch colors. In this one, we added a total row. And you'll notice that I just take the 8 and the 15 and get 23, the 13 and the 14 and get 17, and so on. And we also added a total column. And the column is 8 plus 13 makes 21, 15 plus 4 makes 19, and so on. So having a total on the bottom and on the side helps us out. It also gives us what I sometimes call my total total. It's how many students were asked this question or these series of questions, right? So it's an easy way to see 40 people were surveyed and here's the results. So it gives us some nice information. Now let's go ahead and dive right in and, and finish a problem off. It is very common in math classes to be given a partial two-way table like you see here. And the first task is completing the table and then answering questions about your, your calculations. So I want you to see me do this, right? So I asked students in theory what their favorite sport was and if they liked sushi or not. Well, let's go over a couple things here. I see that if I just start on the left-hand side, I see that I have a total and that total is supposed to be this number and this number together. So that means that I can already tell you that the top number has to be 14 because 14 plus 16 has to be 20. Along those same lines, 28 plus something equals 38. So 28 plus 10 equals 38. So I'm filling these numbers in pretty quickly. Now that my numbers are filled in, I can actually start to go across. 14 plus 28 is 42. 42 plus 4 is 46. And now I can go ahead and, well, clean it up a little bit. And now I could go ahead and add my 46 and my 17 and say that there were 63 people so surveyed total. It is worth noting as a double check, these two numbers should equal 63. And then these numbers should also equal 63. Do a little double check off to the side. 20 plus 38 is 58 plus 5. 59, 60, 61, 62, 63. So it works. That's just a nice way to kind of double check that there's no error that's been made. I usually get rid of the highlighting then, but now we've filled in our table, right? Pretty easy to fill a table in. And now let's answer these questions and we'll be done. Which category is represented by the columns? Well, columns are things that go up and down. Columns go up and down, and the up and down question lines up with what your favorite sport is. So what is your favorite sport. All right, that's what goes with the columns. How many people, once again, let's just clean this, right? Now, when I cleaned it up too much, I lose some of the highlighting, so I'll clean it up just a little bit. 
Oops, I'm losing all kinds of stuff. There we go. Letter B, how many people were surveyed in total? Remember that number? 63. So 63 people surveyed in total. Letter C, how many people enjoy sushi? Doesn't say anything about sports. It's just how many people enjoy sushi. So the sushi likers are the yummy people. That's 46, right? So 46 people said that they like sushi. All right. How many people enjoy both sushi and gymnastics? So now we're looking for the people that think sushi is yummy and the people that like gymnastics. And you see where those two row and columns cross? They cross at 14. Well, 14 is the answer to this question. If you ordered sushi for a group of students, a student council event, a homeroom celebration, whatever, would most of them be happy? Well, let's find out if most students like sushi. Notice it doesn't say anything about sports, so we really just ignore the sports part. We look at how many people like sushi and how many people don't like sushi. And we see that there are 46 out of 63 people that would be happy and 17 out of 63 that would be sad. So would most of them be happy? Yes, um, because, gosh, that's like two-thirds. About two-thirds of them like sushi. Very simple. Now, I didn't calculate a percentage. I'm kind of guessing on the two-thirds, but I think I'm pretty close. Second question and last question. Here's a new two-way table, totally different, all filled in. And here's a question. SVHS, that means Saucon Valley High School. That's my high school. If the Saucon Valley High School principal were going to choose one movie to show to all students in grades 9 through 12, what type of movie should she avoid and explain? Well, I have lots of different information here. I have information about second grade and sixth grade and ninth grade and 12th grade. Well, only two of those fall within the ninth through 12th grade that we care about here. So I'm only gonna focus on ninth and 12th. I'm not gonna pay any attention to second and sixth. And it's too bad I don't know where 10th and 11th graders fit into this, but we don't know that, so we don't worry about it. Now, what type of movie should she avoid? We want the least popular. So here's what I observe, nine plus seven. 13 people liked animation because that was their favorite movie genre. 30 people liked combat or action movies. 25 people liked romantic comedies. If those are my three choices, the combat and action were the favorites, the romantic comedies were second favorite, and the least likely to be enjoyed by only 13 students out of 101 is animation. So I'd pick animation would be the one that I would avoid. Animation because only 13 of 101 like animation. Or I could say only 13 out of 101 chose animation as their favorite. So that is how to not only fill in but interpret two-way frequency tables.